Hi everyone, welcome back to the course on Introduction to Material Science and Engineering offered by Edipedia World. Previous lecture I introduced you the concept of imperfections in solid. The, we discussed about uh, 0D, 1D, 2D and 3D type of imperfections. Today I will go in depth into the 0D or point defects. This is just a revision slide in which uh, we discussed about uh, point defects in metals which were vacancy self interstitial in ceramics which was Frankel defect and Schottky defect and impurities which exist in case of metals as well as ceramics and the categories are interstitial and substitutional. So let's pick each of them one by one. Let's begin our discussion with uh, the idea of vacancies in metals. So what is a vacancy? A vacancy is basically a missing atom. So in a lattice, in a crystalline lattice are defined locations where atoms need to be present, right? That is what brings the regularity and long range ordering in a crystal. But it can so happen that there might be atoms missing from some of its sites, the sites where the atom should be there but it is not there like in this case which we i have shown here we have a atom missing from here there should have been an atom here all the rest of the atoms are intact in its relevant position so this location this mi missing atom is known as a vacancy so this is my vacancy right now why is it that there is vacancy present? Why is it that uh, all the lattice sites are not occupied by atoms? This is so because thermodynamically it is impossible to create a vacancy free solid. Whenever the temperature is greater than 0 Kelvin, temperature greater than 0 Kelvin, vacancy will be present vacancy will be present it is impossible to have a vacancy free solid at temperature greater than 0 kelvin now what is the expression that will give you uh, the relation between temperature and uh, vacancy so basically this relation gives you an idea about how many vacancy what is the amount of vacancy that will be present in a crystalline material let me define the terms NV is the total number of vacancies that will be present th in a thermodynamic state. N is the total number of lattice site, right? S and uh, exponential minus QV by KT. QV is the activation energy for a vacancy. So how much energy is required to form a vacancy? K is basically the Boltzmann constant and T is temperature in Kelvin okay so if we uh, try to realize what exactly this equation says this equation is n e to the power minus q by kt so here we see that if we increase temperature then this whole thing is going to increase or this whole thing is going to increase because here it is in the denominator it's going to increase this is going to decrease but this is negative so the whole thing is increasing thereby number of vacancies increases as temperature increases okay and we can also see from here that uh, the amount of energy required to create a single vacancy if it is high then the number of vacancies will be low and this thermodynamic equation is exact reason why we cannot create a vacancy free solid okay we now know that the thermodynamically it is not possible to create a vacancy free solid but the basic idea is that the presence of vacancies is increasing the entropy of the system and the exact number of vacancies uh, which will have maximum entropy will be defined by this so 
we know that uh, the universe tends towards increasing the entropy so this is the reason the increase in entropy is the reason for presence of vacancies fine and as i already mentioned higher the temperature more will the number of vacancies as given by this equation so we now understand that vacancies are a very important and integral type of point defect which will more or less always be present the only condition it might not be present when we have absolute zero temperature which is not achievable okay so now you will ask me what is the importance of vacancies the importance of vacancy as we'll see and understand in the later processes is that it helps in diffusion right if imagine there was a atom here too all the atoms were in the location where they were supposed to be then any atom cannot travel from here to here you have to break all the bonds then the atom will have will be able to travel somehow right but if you have a vacancy here then this atom this atom can jump here okay and the vacancy as a result comes here then this atom can jump here and the vacancy comes here as a result thereby the vacancy travels one way and resultant atom travels the other way now just imagine that you have so many vacancies uh, a large number of vacancies right and as a result what can happen the atoms will be free to diffuse through the material and this idea that uh, diffusion can take place due to the presence of vacancies is kind of a pivotal idea in defining the properties of the material we will understand that when in our future lectures next let us see the second kind of point defect in metals which is self interstitial so here i have shown you the idea of self interstitial as the name su name suggests self interstitial means the same atom type is additionally fit into the interstitial void so ideally atoms should have been at these locations right it should not have been here but a uh, atom is fit over here to an additional atom that is to say and this extra atom is what is basically self self interstitial self because it is it belongs to the same metal type same if these are iron then this is also iron and interstitial because it is in the interstitial void location but as you see that since it is the same metal type or the same element type the sizes are same but we know that the interstitial voids are quite small compared to the atomic size therefore in order to accommodate this additional atom the surrounding atoms will have to be kind of pushed away this atom needs to move away this atom needs to all the surrounding atoms need to move move away and this atom moving away will create a uh, movement of the, the further surrounding atoms right thereby a large distortion is created in the vicinity of the addis self interstitial atom and uh, due to this idea that uh, the, a large amount of distortion is created which means a large increase of energy is there distortion is a result of energy enhancement right therefore it is quite a uh, improbable scenario to form self interstitials that is to say even if the self interstitial atoms are present they will be very less in number much much less than vacancies fine now let us see the cases of ceramics point defects in the ceramics as this uh, image suggest we can have different kind of point defects what are those we can have vacancies and we can have interstitial same as in the case of metals but here the vacancies can be of two types it can be an ionic vacancy or it can be a cationic vacancy here we have shown the smaller atoms as cation and the larger atoms as anion because that is normally the case 
so we can have anionic vacancy we can have cationic vacancy in addition we can have interstitials and the interstitial atoms will normally be cationic interstitial because anionic interstitials will be very large and lot of distortion therefore it is mostly improbable we can have cationic interstitial because they are smaller in size and they can fit uh, in the interstitial sites okay and since we have more than one kind of atom we have more hence multiple kind of defect as i have already shown here and uh, anion being large anion interstitial is normally absent so this concept over here the point defect uh, for ceramics is parallel to the concept for metals the only difference is since there is multiple types of atoms there will be multiple types of defects parallel to the metal scenario okay now this combination of defects point defects uh, basically gives rise to certain type of com defects which are very typical of ceramics and uh, they are very important to the properties of ceramics too to begin with we will discuss about frankel defect now frankel defect is basically a cation vacancy anion interstitial pair what do we mean by that what we mean is here there was supposed to be a cation right a cation was supposed to be here which is not there so it is absent but this cation has basically been displaced from here to a interstitial site okay so it has traveled from here to there and now it is at the interstitial site so we have a cation vacancy and a cation interstitial and this exist in pair right now why do they need to exist in pair they need to exist in pair because the electrical neutrality needs to be maintained what do i mean the idea is that this being a anion will have a negative charge this being a cation will have a positive charge now suppose i just removed this cation from here right thereby i am re uh, removing a positive charge the whole material will gain a negative charge thereby the electrical neutrality is not maintained therefore the cation cannot just leave the material it can leave the leave its location and go to a different location whereby the electrical neutrality is maintained okay so electron neutrality is the prime concept when uh, discussing with defects of ceramics it the whole material should be electrically neutral fine and also here we see the stoichiometry is maintained why because uh, one cation is lost but the same cation is gained at a different location thereby the whole stoichiometry is maintained so this cation vacancy cation interstitial pair this is what is known as a frankel defect okay next let us see what is a short key defect so a short key defect is a little different than frankel defect in that we have a missing cation same as a frankel defect but this cation is completely missing from the specimen and to counteract this that is to undo for the charge loss we also miss a anion right so we have a cation missing and we have anion missing that is what a short key defect is cation vacancy anion vacancy pair is short key defect and electrical neutrality is maintained in this manner right that both are missing so as to maintain the electrical neutrality and also the stoichiometry is maintained how come because the ratio in which the cations and anions are missing is in the same ratio as their stoichiometry so as to maintain the electrical neutrality okay so this gives you an idea about the kind of point defects that exist in a ceramic mostly they exist in pairs next up i will discuss a different kind of uh, point defect in ceramics which can exist individually too that is 
non stoichiometric defect suppose you have a ceramic which uh, can exist in more than one possible state or more than one possible val valency like iron we know that iron exists as 2 plus as well as 3 plus right now if i have feo right so f e o is basically f e 2 plus and o 2 minus now suppose that i replace 2 f e 2 plus i replace 2 f e 2 plus by 2 f e 3 plus so what will happen 2 f e 2 plus i am replacing by 2 f e 3 plus thereby uh, additional plus 2 charge is gained right because one additional charge from here one additional charge from here plus two charge effectively is gained therefore to maintain electrical neutrality a uh, fe2 plus needs to be missing missing right an additional fe2 plus needs to be missing then that loss of 2 plus and this gain of 2 plus will be counteracted which means that in order to add 2 fe3 plus we have to subtract 3 fe2 plus in order to maintain electrical neutrality so what is happening here we are removing three things and we are putting two things right we are removing 3 fe2 plus and we are just putting 2 fe3 plus so we have a location where atom is missing where there should have been an atom right as a result what we have is a vacancy here but the electrical neutrality is still maintained because of different possible valency state and this missing vacancy results in a non stoichiometry right because the ratio of fe is to oxygen is no more 1 is to 1 now fe has reduced it becomes something like 0 0.95 is to 1 okay and uh, this is what is non stoichiometric defect here we have a single defect that is the defect does not exist in pair even in a ceramic system fine next let us see the cases of impurity defects first in the case of metal so as i discussed uh, let us imagine iron and uh, in iron if all the iron atoms are located in its lattice site everything is fine and perfect okay now if i add carbon into it fine if i add carbon into it then the car carbon will go somewhere carbon being much smaller than iron it will go into the interstitial sites okay so if the impurity atom or the uh, solute atom that is the different atom is called solute the base atom is called solvent not called rather we can think it parallel to the that concept then in the case of iron carbon what is happening is that the carbon is going into the interstitial location because it is much smaller thereby we are getting interstitial impurities in the form of carbon but since this location was supposed to be vacant but we have added a uh, impurity atom this will cause distortion in the surrounding atoms that is the atoms will slightly move away from its original location and thereby an increase in internal energy will take place over here distortion energy will be created fine so this is what is known as, known as interstitial impurity alternatively what can also happen is that the atom which we are adding can be quite close in size to the uh, base atom right so if the base atom and the solute atom are very close in size then instead of interstitial impurity we will get what is known as substitutional impurity substitutional impurity will be when the base atom will be missing and in place of that 
the solute atom will be there if the that can be in two kind of scenarios the addition atom which is added that is the impurity can be larger than the base atom or it can be smaller than the base atom but similar in size if it is larger then it will push away the rest of the surrounding atoms to accommodate itself if it is smaller smaller then it will pull the rest of the atoms towards itself in order to accommodate itself right so these both cases also brings distortion in the system but this both cases are when the atom is substituting the base atom the impurity atom is substituting the base atom whereas in uh, interstitial impurity the impurity atom went in the interstices interstices it did not substitute and there uh, as i discussed there will be stress and strain in the lattice next let us discuss the same concept for ceramics this was for atom where uh, we see the base are the same atoms the impurity is just uh, additional atom whereas in ceramics what will happen the base will be uh, two or more different kind of atoms the anion and the cation right and here what will happen is similar to the case of metal we can have substitutional as well as interstitial impurity the interstitial impurity is over here right if the atom impurity atom is much smaller in size then it can go into the into the interstices location if the atom is comparable to the cation then it can substitute a cation if the impurity atom is comparable to the anion then it can substitute the anion atom so we have the interstitial impurity we have anionic substitution we have uh, rather we have cationic substitution and we have anionic substitution similar to the case of metal impurities ceramic impurities also produces a lot of strain in the lattice and uh, obviously neutrality needs to be maintained in all the cases okay so uh, what we discussed today was the different kind of uh, point defects and we saw starting with uh, point defect as vacancy we understood the concept then we saw point defects in uh, self interstices then we saw point defect in ceramics that is cationic vacancy anionic vacancy and cationic interstitial we saw the combination of them in frankel defect and schottky defect we saw the non stoichiometric defect which can exist in ceramics then we saw the case of substitutional and interstitial impurities in the case of uh, metal and the same in case of ceramics and as i discussed these impurity atoms or rather these all combination of point defects are pivotal to the properties which will be at the end product that is these a zero degree defects this point defects gives a lot of input and um, uh, modifies the properties of the material a lot thereby by tweaking this uh, uh, this kind of uh, point defects by different processing systems we can tweak the properties and thereby use it for different applications so it's not that the defects are always bad the defects if uh, carefully put into the material can be put to use for different functional requirements okay this brings us to the close of the discussion on point defects next lecture we will discuss about one dimensional defects we will see what are dislocations what is screw and edge dislocation so till next lecture have a great day goodbye Thank you.